Hello and welcome to another edition of Video Games Max, and here with me as always, Mr. Mark Morrison. Howdy. And of course, I'm your host, Sean Garmer, here with us as well, Daniel Anderson. Hello. And, well, this isn't like, you know, the biggest, it seems like we're just waiting for like the next two weeks now where there's supposed to be all these uh, announcements, uh, whether they be big or small. Between uh, Sony's thing that is happening at the end of this week, along with Sega's new projects, and then, you know, the, the bigger stuff that's coming down the line. So there won't be a ton of news, I feel like, from the last week to talk about, but we will see how it goes. You never know if we get into some uh, good conversations before then, but anything been going on with you guys? Mark? Playing some games. You? I have not been playing uh, some games. I've been trying to rewatch Stranger Things with Anaya uh, because she likes uh, sci-fi stuff. So we've been slowly getting through that so we can watch season four together. Only sort of thing I've been doing aside from working and all of that. I'm kind of still waiting for some things to come here uh, before I finally get into get get back into the where gaming is huge part. I feel like that's what everybody's doing right now. I think they even said uh, the latest MPD show that there was, they had like a playing poll and it's everything that was there except Elden Ring was from years past. So I think that that seems to be everybody's boat right now. Daniel, anything with you? Not much gaming. I've been a, uh... Watched Kenobi, watched, uh, I think, five episodes of Stranger Things. I'm on episode six now and got to help dig fence posts and shovel gravel for somebody else on my first day off. So I haven't really had a, much of a chance to play many games yet. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun <laughs> there. We'll probably talk about the Kenobi at the end. I watched uh, both of those as well, so we can definitely... Definitely talk about that towards the end. So, Mark, you're the only one that's been playing games here. And you're playing this game that I've heard a lot about. Uh, so, you're playing this this game. Uh, I'm assuming you got the, the code from Adam that I saw yeah. in the email. Okay, so there is this, uh, if you don't know, it's been the rave on Steam for the last couple of weeks. I've heard comparisons to Vampire Valheim. Would you agree? With V Rising being that, I didn't play Valheim, so <laughs> okay, or well, like a, sort of like a resource gathering survival game sort of thing. I mean, it's basically The Sims mixed with like Diablo, but you're playing a vampire. Okay. Uh, I mean, it is survival focused. It's in pretty early access. I guess like version zero point five. Right. The fundamentals are pretty pretty good. The problem is there's like no story whatsoever. Okay, and. I assume there will be because it kind of makes it seem like there will be. It's hard for me to get into because of that. Like the only mission you really have is like keep upgrading your castle, but it's not really spelled out well how to do that. Cause it, I mean, it follows like the traditional tech tree of like, Oh, you can create copper or copper ingots. Now you can, uh, you know, upgrade your weapons to be copper focused, go to the next, you know, now you have to create a fl castle floor, but it didn't like, wasn't explained like really how well to do that. I had to like look to Google to do it. So it's a lot of that. It's pretty solitary. Like I think it's supposed to, it is supposed to be kind of like multiplayer focused, but I detest that in these types of games. So I'm playing it just like alone, which you can do, thankfully. Uh, I've heard it's pretty hardcore on the vampire part. Like if you Yeah are cutting like you down can't... a tree and you yeah, see like the it, sun, it, it'll burn you. It does have like there is like a day night cycle, which is actually kinda cool. Uh, that's why I mean it's like sim focused, you know, or like the sims okay. kind of. There is a day night cycle, and there is like physics with the sun. Like the sun will travel across the world, or like of the land. So you can be in a shaded spot, and then like you know it'll tick by, and like two minutes later, and you won't be shaded anymore, and you you will start taking damage due from the sun, or like you can't carry silver coins because they damage you. I know this is pretty uh, spot on with uh, the vampire lore there. Yeah. 
See, this is a part of that's not explained like that well, but you can find basically powered up enemies to kill and you drain their blood and then you gain new powers. Kind of like mini bosses or like, you know, n- or like named enemies like Diablo. Like the first okay. one I killed gave me like a wolf travel form. And I killed this like asshole necromancer guy and he gave me like a few like spell powers. But it, like the combat is like not, it's good, but it's very kind of unfocused or just early. So that's an, that's kind of an issue. But just the lack of story is like dragging it down for me personally. Cause at least like Diablo gave you kind of a story. <laughs> so is the travel sort of like extensive or is it like, you know, you're, just going through a few different places or there is a pretty decent sized map, but you can't teleport while you're carrying materials, which kind of sucks. And you're not, I'm not quite sure what you're supposed to do with that. Like if you can just drop them, like if you can somehow make, get an ability to like, well, that will let you do that at some point. Or if you get like some bat ability or something, I mean, it's fun, but it's just, just not, like certain elements just aren't explained that well. Like, to create a castle, you have to, like, create a castle floor. So I had to find a dude that had, like, the one material I needed to do that. Or to create a machine to create bricks. And I did that. And then it's like, I start creating a floor. It's like, oh, all this crap that's already on the ground, I can't have, I can't just place a floor underneath it. And it's like, well, I might as well just create a whole new castle then. Because, and just kind of start again, you know? Like, because it would take me more time to, to, move everything out of the way or do what I need to than to just create a whole new one. <laughs> so how do you gather resources if you can't be in the sun? I mean, the the day-night cycle, it's like 16 hours at night, maybe like 8 in the day. or maybe It's like around that. I mean, you can't still travel around in the day. You just have to stay to the shaded areas. <laughs> okay. And you can, like, feed on enemies. Like, feeding doesn't, re- like, explicitly restore your health, which is weird. There's, like, a sub-menu that does. And you think that would be something on the menu that says, like, hey, if you if you need health, press this button. Yeah. But there's not. <laughs> but, like, feeding gives you, like, temporary bonuses, and you can, like, upgrade those. Like, there's, like, a whole idea of, like, different blood has different quantitative value. Like, beast blood is, like, low class. But if you... Human blood... And there's even, like, classes, like, rogue blood versus warrior blood versus, like, berserker blood. And I think if you keep feeding on people, like it'll keep increasing that, but it's just not just ex- like, again, not explain that well. There's like a lore book, but it's like just the most like basic thing you'd think of. All right, I mean, it is an early access, so they're definitely, you know, kind of going through things. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's another game called that, uh, hardline shipbreaker game or hard space. I think. Hard space, I yeah. mean, that was an early access for a long ass time too. And it shares a lot of the same elements of like, yeah, when the game first came out, it was like, it was functional and fun, but they didn't explain anything or barely. And over the year or two, that game was in early access. They added more and more. And now that it's finally out, there's actually kind of a story. That's good. Yeah. I remember you liking it. Yeah. Uh, talking about it quite a bit there. So. I think it's on, I think it's on Xbox or game pass or something. I don't know about the, yes, the spot, it is but. on uh game passes on our game pass on PC. So there's that. V Hunter or V V Rising or Uprising or whatever the hell it's called. It's a good game, but you know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was actually looking at picking it up, but the fact that it was pretty bare bones is what kept me from getting it so far. Well the only bare bones part is like the story. Like it yeah. does have a kind of an intro movie that like sets it up, but like after that you're just on your own. Like you would you yeah. would expect in that game to be there to be like some type of like minion who summoned you and explains things what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I uh I just wanted to give it a couple more months and early access to see what changes have been made before spending the money on it. Yeah. Does it cost anything to it's twenty bucks, it I think, or thirty bucks? or and it has DLC already, which is kinda of funny. Like like cosmetic DLC I think, but yeah, I think on Steam it was a Dracula DLC, and it was a Dracula skin or something. Yeah, it's twenty bucks right now, and the the DLC is like ten. So yeah, there's like additional DLC you can buy, or one is Dracula, which is ten, and then one is the Founder's Pack, which is thirty. So, so definitely something to check out if you're in one of those gaming doldrums and you like uh, those type of games. But like you said, like uh, Mark said, this aware of what you're getting into before you splash that cast. So any anything else you want to mention here, Mark? 
Holy. I might buy a Sega Saturn soon. <laughs> well, there you go. Who knows? Maybe that'll be what Sega announces in that event. You never know. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to this summer gaming showcase event thing that is replacing E3. So, first of all, speaking of events, they had the Star Wars celebration, and the worst kept secret, or one of the worst kept secrets in all of gaming, has been Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Order getting a sequel. It is called Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order 2 Jedi Survivor, and it's going to be out next year. Uh, it's set five years after the first game. Uh, the trailer looks pretty cool. Uh, this is still a game that is on my list of I really need to make sure I get back and play that. Mark, you really love the game? Yeah. Uh, the first good. one. Any like ex- expectations you have? Any Anything from seeing the trailer? Anything? I'm waiting for that dude to get his own Star Wars TV show. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if that happens pretty soon or if he shows up in uh, one of the existing shows, which I did see somebody talking that the five-year gap puts the sequel right in the time frame of Kenobi. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I like that game a lot. Uh, I mean, more more worlds and stuff would be cool, but I thought it was it would have been nice if it just kind of stood on its own, but that'll never happen again. So <laughs> more force yeah. powers would be good. I mean, because you don't have a lot in the game to begin with. I mean, they, you, you do get more later on, but it's never, like, really fun <laughs> or really, like, ex- like expensive. <laughs> You had to figure they were going to make a second one after as much love the first one got and the one, you know, it seemed like the one thing outside of squadrons that EA had really nailed with Star Wars. So considering how that's been going with them and now that Disney doesn't, you know, didn't renew the license, they're having all these other companies make Star Wars games. You well, had I'm to sure think Disney they were going to happy to make, e- you know, happy to make games with EA, but they have to be good. And most EA games haven't been. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, sure, but like, don't be exclusive when you can bring out all these other Star Wars titles from other companies. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought Star Wars fans wanted a single player game with a good story? Shocking. Yeah. Right. Hey, man, where do you got Connect Star Wars? What more, what more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and those are the ones that people remember, right? Are these single player Star Wars games? I mean, how much hype I mean, the, is uh, the remake, the Kotor remake, getting right now? You know, I mean, the multiplayer ones, like the st- like the more like star sh- like flying around ones, do well. But yeah, like the multi, right. like, I don't really care about the shooters because you know it's just a Star Wars skin over whatever. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Battlefront Two was you know not fondly remembered. Yeah, you know, due to factors where they got greedy. So, well, and EA went through what two or three single player Star Wars games that they started development and then canceled. And then, yeah, the Star uh, Wars thirteen thirteen, that would have been amazing. Then the other Bounty Hunter game or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like they didn't want to do a single player game for the longest time and then they finally put this one out and I'd be shocked if they expected it to do as well as it did. Although now it'll have like unrealistic expectations, so that'll be fun. <laughs> oh of course. I mean that's just normal, right? It's just natural when you have a such a big hit like Fallen Order One, you gotta deliver at least that or more with Fallen Order Two, right? I mean, that's just kind of EA has always been a little screwy about how they view sequels. Like they think that sequels will somehow do better than like the original game, and I say that doesn't typically happen. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And then also they'll kept... put it up against a bigger release, and they'll kind of cannibalize themselves at launch. So then yeah. they talk about a disappointing launch. Hopefully they have learned from what happened to Titanfall 2 and never do that again. Or Battlefield, for that matter. And not Battlefield, but Battle, is it Battlefront is a military one? Or is it Battlefield? Bat- it's Battle- Battlefield. F- Battlefield, yeah. Yeah, like that thing has been such a disaster for them this year. Or like, you know, over the past six months. It's been like weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they're still, they're lucky there's still people playing it. But definitely... Not it's, not, <laughs> yeah. it's not the thing they wanted it to be. Well, sure. and I think we talk, I think I brought it up when we talked about Arma 4 and Arma Reforger. I think they threw out the one that they just did for early access just to tr- try to get fans away from the Battlefield 
failure and start trying to get them into the Arma games. Yeah. Yeah, that, no doubt EA is going to try anything they can uh, to get you distracted and on to something else at this point. But speaking of things that uh, we'll just have to wish we got but never will, uh, apparently this new the new Marvel MMO game that was supposed to be coming from the, the developers of DCU Online has been canceled. Uh, didn't we didn't really get to know a whole lot about the game? They kind of just announced it, and then that was sort of it. They have pictures that have shown up online. It looks cool, but I mean that's all you can really say without having gotten any hands on it or anything. Yeah. Even if it came out, I wouldn't believe them. I enjoyed the DC online game when it launched, and I revisited it a few years later. I haven't checked it out again recently, but I thought it would have been good to have had a Marvel MMO in the same vein. Well, and, they, they did. It was called Marvel Heroes. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why yeah. I don't believe them. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I kind of wonder if the reaction to Avengers might have made them rethink off completely. Doing a, yeah, made them rethink doing an MMO, which if done correctly, you could work. It's just, you've got to not try to just nickel and dime people to do stuff and give them content and not just promise it and it still not be there years later. I mean, honestly, they should just, I mean, bring back Marvel Heroes. <laughs> well, I don't think they can just bring that back again like that. Well, I'm sure they own the code. I mean, give it give it to a developer and say, here, make this work and add in more MCU shit now, please. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird that, like, you could make... If you do it right, but like, you know, Daniel said, Avengers was sort of their live service version of that and it didn't work. How much more could you do with an MMO? I mean, you could have it have more than nine characters. You could have or just, yeah. or just don't go with the MCU at all. Just yeah, heavy into the comic books and <laughs> look at how many characters you could have there. And nobody's going to be comparing the look and voice of Captain America. Avengers to the look and voice of the MCU Captain America. Or you could have like an MCU skin. I mean, yeah, yeah like that's what Marvel Heroes would, was doing. It's like Daniel saying, you can have it follow a storyline that you set out that doesn't have to follow the MCU and then you can still have the the MCU look if you want. Yeah, well, I think the problem with the one of the, well, one of the problems with the Avengers game is they tried to make it look as much like the MCU as like but not use any of the voices, not use any of the actors, change the likenesses of the characters yeah, to the seriously. point that you feel like why exactly. the half-hearted push for it? Either go full in and use the MCU actors if you can, use the looks, or go comic book. I mean, don't try to do this little half and half that nobody's going to be happy with. I mean, I don't like that uh, Guardians of the Galaxy voice acting in that game, but like, all the characters looked fine, or you know, they, they clearly were going at the comic book likenesses. So I, did, I, I didn't draw huge comparisons to the MCU, although at least they had the skins they could unlock that didn't cost money. Yeah, and they made it really clear at the very beginning of the game that it was different than the MCU. The Avengers game, when it launched it, and you were looking at it, it didn't. I mean, I remember, everyone looked like the MCU. <laughs> yeah, I remember when it, they first showed the trailer, everybody was wondering if it was going to be the MCU actors. Then they took the time to have that, uh, you know, voice actor circle at during the showcase of E3 to drag the whole thing down. Like, what? Why? <laughs> but it wasn't a circle. It was a circle jerk. Let's be honest here. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had like, I mean, everyone in that game looked like basement bargain versions of what the MCU actors were. Yeah. Yeah. And it had gameplay issues. And didn't they have it where you couldn't have, uh, everybody had to have a different character, right? You couldn't have four Thors. Yeah, against like you each could, other, and, and I think there's not a ton of characters in that game to begin with. It's not, I mean, Marvel Heroes they had like 50 characters at some point, so that's that's way more doable than you got nine. And if you don't, I mean, if you like to play the Hulk and there's already a Hulk, well, go get a different group. They did a good job with the DLC, I thought, but it was like a little bit too. It was a little too late at that point. By the time yeah. the Hawkeye and the the Wakanda DLC came out, people oh, were kind of like, "Yeah, I'm done here." Oh, the problem with the DC DC online one, I think, is like you can't play Spider Man, or you can't play as like Superman or Batman. You have to create your own character. Yeah, but you see those characters enough that I, you I mean, don't really feel like 
You're yeah, not... they're like quest givers, or you know, they're they're integral to the game. But yeah, you know, I mean, it's I like mean, that City of Heroes thing. Yeah, I mean, I was fine with the DCU online not letting you play as the big heroes. Otherwise, you'd have forty Supermans in a raid, or I mean, it just it made more sense to just have everybody create your own hero. You could do the same thing in the Marvel Universe MMO. And just have people interact with those characters as opposed to trying to play as them. Well, uh, unfortunately, that game's not coming out, so we'll have to see if they ever try to greenlight another Marvel MMO or something to that equivalent for PC and or consoles in the future. But right now, uh, speaking of something that has been huge on PC for much of its life, and when they finally had the remaster remake of it come out, it was one of the most disappointing games of last year. And now they're supposedly going to give you more information on it and supposedly going to have a roadmap. It would help but, if you like, mention yeah. what the thing is. <laughs> yeah, Ro- Warcraft 3v4, so I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think any fans of it have moved on and are not going to trust Blizzard at this point with fixing the game. Yeah. I mean, if there were problems with it, if you had just said at the beginning, Hey, we're going to take a break while we work on things to try to make it better. You'd have kept some people going, but they just went radio silent basically. And nothing was worked on. Nothing was talked about. Nothing was released. And now they're saying, Oh, wait, 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 we do have a plan and you'll hear more about it next month. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's all Mikey Barra had to say about it. It's just we don't we can't give you any details on what that roadmap supposedly is, but you'll hear about it. I guess. I mean, one good one thing they could do is like make Warcraft three playable again because like that, when, once Reforged came out, it completely destroyed the the original Warcraft three client. Like you can't play Warcraft three anymore. Yeah. Now they uh they really pissed off a lot of fans with the botched launch of this and I don't see them trusting Blizzard to come back anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sucks because, you know, the World of Warcraft's kind of where it is at this point. And there was a lot of people excited for this that didn't hit. And now you're kind of just like they're putting everything on Diablo right now. Diablo Immortal's about to come out in a matter of days. Except in a few countries. <laughs> yeah, except that a few countries, you know, due to the um, loot boxes and all that other monetization. But that's understandable, considering. Anyone here going to play Diablo Immortal? No. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say maybe. On my, on my phone, I might. I don't know if I'm going to play it on my PC. I might look at it just to see how it is, but I'm not going to spend any money on it. I def- yeah, I definitely won't be spending money. I would, I would definitely check it out just because it's neat to have something like that on your phone and but the moment i start seeing how if there's really bad monetization i'm definitely going to be turned off about a so, half hour in i was just gonna say just out of curiosity while we're talking about it how long do you think the servers will be down from launch for it due to quote unexpected demand where people can't log in or play the game <laughs> pretty quickly because you know there's going to be even if people are saying terrible things about it you know there's going to be that subset of fans that are still going to be like oh yeah i'm checking it out i'm checking it out regardless and then it'll fill up the servers and it'll knock it down so yeah my question is how long will it take take a person to like kill a boss and get like a chest but it'll say hey if you want to upgrade the chest quality you have to pay some money or pay some gems or pay some gold dust or something like you said if it's earlier than an hour than 30 minutes in it wouldn't be totally surprising i guess that's the only thing that kind of turns me off like i think a mobile diablo is a great idea but knowing that it's built around mobile is also the bad idea because that's you're gonna run into that a lot will they get the whales that they want out of it so they can keep making stuff for it maybe probably not (laughs) but Especially yeah. not the Blizzard of now. I mean, maybe yeah. all the uh, scandal hadn't happened, maybe, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, just from the way they've... What, the last three, four years, Blizzard has not really had anything work really well and any real big successes. I mean, 
look at Warcraft 3 Reforged failed. The Diablo 2 uh, relaunch, upgrade, whatever they called it, that wasn't terrible, but there were still issues with it. WoW has plummeted. People are, have not been happy with it. WoW Classic, which was their saving grace to try to get people back, has gone that it, down. That is essentially dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Diablo Immortal was botched from the announcement on with the way they approached the fans with it. I mean, at what point does Blizzard... Th- it, Blizzard needs a unqualified success at this point, and I don't think they're going to get it with this because people are going to... What's going to happen is you're going to see all these stories about how many people logged in and created accounts for the first week, and then the player base is going to plummet once people realize they can't do anything without spending real money. And that'll be it. Yeah, either that or they're going to have to remove a lot of the monetization stuff to get people to actually stick with the game, which will be defeat the purpose of what they're trying to do, uh, which will then be they'll sit there and go, Oh, it's your fault that we're not making any money off of this, so we have to shut it down because you guys are not do what we need you to do um, like you would in any any other sort of game of this type. They're really hinging everything on Diablo 4 right now. Yeah, and Diablo Immortal, I don't think, is going to really get people that excited for Diablo 4. I could be wrong. Maybe there's a clever way they can tie Immortal into 4 to get people interested and reward people that don't spend money with some type of leg up in Diablo four. But I just, I don't, I went from anything blizzard put out, you knew was going to be quality. Even if you had to wait five years past the first release date to now, I don't trust blizzard to put anything out that works. So what was your, uh, Mark asked, what was your tipping point, Daniel? Uh, my tipping point just, I mean, it, like I knew WoW was going to fall off. I wasn't. I wasn't even playing WoW when everybody said it fell off. But the, just once they started attacking fans when they announced Diablo Immortal, complaining, "Don't you have phones?" That was the point where they seemed to take their fan base for granted, and everything started going downhill for them. And I feel like unless Diablo Four is a huge success, I don't see how they're going to come back from it. Yeah. I mean, their last game was Overwatch, like their last like new property. That was a yeah. while ago. <laughs> that was like six years ago. <laughs> They've made two half-assed HD remasters or ports, and that's been about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think what hurt Diablo was that came out pretty much right after people had started doing the whole, hey, I, let's not support Blizzard and Activision and all that because of the scandal and. I mean, some of that's still going on now, so it's not helping them. I think they really aren't going to see any improvement until they are officially a part of Microsoft and Phil Spencer and co start figuring out how they're going to treat these properties in the future and what to do with them. And then also, you know, he's talked about bringing back some of the old properties that are part of the like, old Blizzard, you know, but that's just the task force. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not that, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, Lost Vikings and Rock and Roll Racing, all that stuff. But I, for Blizzard, it's it really is that. I think that's going to help them kind of get out of this rut that they're in, rejuvenize everybody, and re- you know, get them to to get going. Because even something like Hearthstone, that's been that's still kind of around, it's become this thing that like it's stagnant. Yeah. I think it's really funny that Diablo Immortal will have an auction house, though. Yeah, that's. That we'll see how really long well. that lasts. They're gonna, <laughs> it's going to roll really well for them, yeah. Well, so I will. I'll defend it to a point because people, it was everything was working fine with Diablo two when people were selling stuff on eBay. You just had the complaints. Somebody bought yeah. something and the person didn't drop it. So the idea that you could pay real money in an auction house for in game items that somebody else is selling, I'm fine with that. But where they went wrong was, at least initially with Diablo 3, if somebody had, let's say, a sword dropped with certain stats, there isn't gonna, there was not going to be a du- duplicate one. And people were just hoarding those items and putting them up in the real money auction house, and very few people were buying stuff on there. And so that killed progression in the game 
which also made people not like the game. It could have been done better, and I don't think anybody would have complained, but the way that it was set up was just, it was bad. Yeah, and also the astronomical prices. Well, yeah, but I can't blame Blizzard for that because that's what people were putting it up for. Now, you had people farming, I mean, you had bots farming items, and that drove up the prices as well. But again, they should have known that was going to be an issue and taken steps to defeat that. But we can't, we don't have retailers that can stop bots from buying 20 PS5s whenever they drop. So yeah, maybe I'm being too hard on Blizzard for that. I mean, that is true. There's not a whole lot. They're still having problems with people doing those. Those. I mean, they've gotten better about it. seems like people have been able to get the PS5s, but you're still having that issue. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see if they actually do uh, when or if they make any kind of announcements in June um, as far as Warcraft 3 Reforged and everything else. Aside from them saying, hey, we're, we're fitting on Warcraft 3 Reforged. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, waiting for things. That's what Sony wants us to do. They keep announcing a lot of different things that are happening uh, with them here. Um, they did say they were going to go big into the PlayStation Studios things as far as entertainment goes. There's a Horizon Zero Dawn series coming yeah. to Netflix. God of War is supposedly coming to Amazon, a series. And then uh, there's a movie of Gran Turismo. I see, when I saw uh, it online, they were saying it was a uh, TV series. Not a movie, but yeah, they either way, it be a movie. Yeah, <laughs> even, I mean, I feel like a Gran Turismo movie. It's going to be a lot like Battleship or the Need for Speed movie. Yeah, it's just maybe I'm wrong, but I can't see that doing too well as a movie. But I want it to be a movie, but it's just like two hours of them putting microphones underneath cars. <laughs> like that's the whole plot. <laughs> Yeah. Or like somebody customizing a bunch of different cars for two hours. Or like some dude having to do like license tests over and over. I really don't see where you're going to go with this other than like, unless you're going to take a different look at it and go more of the Ford versus Ferrari kind of route of try to... But like that yeah. was steeped in history. or that Yeah, that yeah that's, that's <laughs> what I'm saying though. Like are you going to take more of that kind of route with it instead of you can't possibly think you're going to have another fast and the furious or whatever on your hands with that. So I di- I just don't get what you're going to do with a grand Turismo movie other than, Oh, well, we got to use that name for something. It's just horizon zero dawn or, or horizon zero dawn. Okay. Sure. God of war. Yes. That. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm kind of curious to see how they can do horizon zero dawn on a, without having a Lord of the Rings style budget, because all the CGI that's going to be required for that, for the animals is going to be kind of insane. Miniatures. That's all, that's or that's robotic all animal. I mean, robotic animals. I, would it, you know, the, I imagine to be like Halo, you know, just making it like have like episodes one and 10 be the expensive ones. And then all the other ones are cheap as hell. Could be. I mean, there is it's a lot just, of talking to, different people in the tribes or whatever in the second game. So they could base it off of that. Just there's a lot of talking between this person and that person. And then you have your, like, you know, Mark said, there's big tent piece episodes where you get the action. For me, I'd, be, I'd just be curious to who they get for those roles. I mean, I guess you could get some of the actual actors, right? That you no. see in the... Because not like, you know, Ashley Birch voices Aloy in Horizon. She doesn't look like Aloy. <laughs> like Definitely. Christopher Judge as uh, Kratos, Kratos in the God of War <laughs> series. I mean, hey, I'm all... F- Tilk was awesome. I want to see the Stargate series. I can't see them having him play well, Kratos well, in a live-action series. No offense to Christopher Judge. Isn't he, like, messed up physically? <laughs> Or, yeah. Well, they had to they had to delay yeah, like, it because delay of back it. surgery, I think. But I, I mean, think he's supposed to be better. I mean, he's I mean, like almost pushing sixty. Like, yeah, that's the mm-hmm. other thing. Yeah, I, definitely they won't. I, I can see them have him in there as like a side character, so you can say, "Hey, there's Christopher Judge," uh, you know, but well, not as Kratos. 
I we got uh, wonder, Casey Carson back. I kind of wonder if uh, they might be looking at some of these being animated series instead of live action. Because all they, I think all it said was series. It didn't say animated, live action, or anything like that. So I'm kind of wondering if they're still debating what the best way to do it is. Yeah, could they do CGI instead or something like that? Yeah, possible. I mean, How much would they tie these like, to the games? Yeah, I mean, I mean well, not I mean, at all. Yeah, look at what you did with Castlevania. It was a yeah. hit, and it didn't really follow the game story to a T, but people enjoyed it, and I'm assuming since Netflix didn't cancel it right away, it was a big enough hit that people kept watching it. Yeah, it had four seasons. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And they're still supposed to be doing, uh, what's the next show he's doing? I know they're going to work on some Castlevania sequel or some... Well, no, but he was going to do another video game series, wasn't he? The guy uh, did the the director maybe. for that. Yeah, I think I remember hearing something about it, but I can't recall the, what the game was. And what do you guys think about the uh, Neil Blogcamp being the? I guess he's going to be the director for the Gran Turismo movie. Hey man, didn't you like that Halo movie he did? <laughs> District Nine I mean, was. was that, that's the that that's the problem with that guy. He made one good movie, and that was it. Yeah. As much as people like to shit on uh, M Night Shyamalan, like he's made a few. Decent to good movies, aside from Sixth Sense. But Neil Blomkamp has made three movies that have gotten progressively worse as he's made them. Like, he's, like, <laughs> a half step above, like, fucking uh, Uwe Boll at this point. Like, oh, on. man. Oh, man. Let's not go yeah. there. Hey, didn't, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Uwe Boll say he's doing another movie here soon? <laughs> I don't think it's Probably. a video game movie, but... It- I mean, yeah, he's still, he, he he is still directing stuff nowadays, but not just not video game stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's. I would take a waste of his talents because he's not like action movie director really, or like racing director. And then what's the story going to be? Is it going to have uh the guy in it, you know, from District Nine? Like that'd be kind of funny to me personally. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, that uh, the series I was thinking of, he's going to make a um castle uh Devil May Cry. Oh, that's next, right. Uh, yeah, the next. There hasn't been enough Devil May Cry series already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can't really comment too much on the director. But I, I'm just still like, I have no idea how they're gonna make this Grand Tours movie. Anything that we either haven't seen before, or try to make another rip off of Fast and the Furious, or you know, unless you're just gonna idea. make some gritty. Drama. I don't know. I mean, you know how Tom Cruise is big again now. You just, yeah. uh, you just put out Dave the Thunder again, but you replace it with Gran Turismo. Done and done. <laughs> I, I still want to see Top Gun Maverick. You don't hate on that. Well, I'll probably no. go see it, but no. I mean, that's a good point. You could do a <laughs> Days of Thunder style movie, and it'll be like rookie trying to get into racing. He'll have a ride, and it'll be like cars. You know, like. <laughs> that's what all these, every racing movie is, essentially. Sony is going to continue to bring more games to PC. I mean, this isn't a big shocker, uh, considering that they have a lineup already for this year and perhaps next year. And they're, they keep doing well every time they bring a game to PC. But when they talk about having more than half of their games on PC and mobile by we get to 2025. That seems like to me, we're eventually going to have to lessen the gap of when you get PC games from Sony properties than the way it is now. Well, it depends on the size of the game or what they want to put on PC versus what they don't. Yeah. I mean, like, talking yeah. about their catalog on PC or mobile, there's a lot of things they could do to, well, I, I'm just saying, like, I don't think we're going to start. I think we're going to start seeing at some point games coming out faster to PC than they are now. Faster than two years or three yeah. at this point. Yeah, I could see them shortening the time between maybe having the PC version being worked on while at the I, same time they're working on the PS5 release and release it like a year later or something. That's what I was going to say. I'd say a year at at the bare minimum, but I don't think it'll get shorter than that i think if let's say returnal gran turismo 7 do well i i think you're definitely going to start cutting it more six months well we're going to already be a year because that 
Well, that came out, yeah, last year, April 30th. So, well, I know it'll be a year. I'm just saying, if they keep doing well, I think they're eventually going to start shortening the gap because you're going to want to get after like six months, they start putting sales on the game after like two or three months. So, why not after six months when you've already given, you start doing half off on the game? You can sell it on PC for full price and people will pay for it. And you may get more people because by the time you get to a year, maybe you don't get as many. I think it's different when you get God of War or like these big tent poles or whatever. But I think you will start seeing like this diminishing returns. Like, I don't know you're going to keep seeing every game beat out the last game every time they put it on PC. Yeah, that'll eventually stop just from... I mean, just from the games that they're putting out, if nothing else. I'd be really surprised if the Uncharted collection does anywhere near what God of War did. It won't. I can well, tell you that definitively. <laughs> well, it also depends on what the price of it is. I mean, if they price it for $25, $30, I could see people wanting to pick it up to play it that haven't played it yet. Just to, they've heard I, about how good the game is and want to see it. Well, I think it's it. Well, for one, it's two games, so they could technically do sixty. I, didn't it launch yeah. at forty on PS Five though? Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine, it'll but be 40. well, that's also a remaster. Like it's getting remastered for a console, which you can already play it on. Uh, I mean, Uncharted Four is part of the PS Five collection thing, so no, it launched uh, at fifty. So, uh, but I I see them launching it at forty on PC. A- anything higher is crazy. <laughs> So those those yeah. games are older than like Days Gone or Horizon, let alone God right. of War. Yeah, I, I I think this is something that we're starting to see Sony like move past just playing PlayStation. You know, all, everything's gonna be on PlayStation. Everything's gonna be there. I don't think we're gonna get to what Microsoft does, where you get the day and date. That'll never yeah. happen. <laughs> I wouldn't say never. I don't think you can ever say never because. If they're already trying to go beyond just the console, what are they talking about now? Ten live service games, you know, so they can have games that live beyond just these, you know, huge third person narrative games. I mean, you got to imagine those are going to have a track of going on PC a lot faster as well so they can get more people playing it. Well, okay, let me ask this because I'm and there's probably a really obvious answer. What's the last live service game on console that's still doing well? Because in my mind, all I'm thinking about are the failures. Define well, because I mean, I see a thieves. I mean, uh, Rocket League is still still cooking. It's not crazy, but it's still doing well. Um, but we're saying what? Well, like you know, games now. Apex Legends. Apex well, on Legends, console yeah. though, Fortnite. So, Apex- yeah, but they're Legends. they're getting played on court. They're getting played on console. They're not just getting played yeah, on PC. But I, I'm kind of curious as to how the money between PC and console are actually going for some of those. I mean, you think back to what was it? Anthem was supposed to be the next big game as service. Then it was going to be Avengers. I mean, Destiny's still doing its thing, even though. Yeah, but I, I mean, that's not like a tentpole. It was supposed to be a tentpole game, but it kind of fell off, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you hear all these people talking about how they, or all these companies talking about how they're going to have all these games of service that are going to have a 10-year lifespan. Most of them don't, and they become massive failures. And at what point are people going to start moving away from anticipating that they're going to have a 10-year lifespan and just be pleasantly surprised if they do? Well, that's the whole thing about, like, you know, these game companies want think their game will be the biggest thing ever. It has to be, that has to be an organic thing. Yeah. Like I always think about Evolve when that came out and they're like, Oh, it's going to be the esports game of the decade. And like six months later, no one was playing it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, they also tried to nickel and dime people with the DLC. And I mean, I just, I feel like all these companies are trying to get that 10 year lifespan game of service, but, I mean, it seems like the newest things that they've been tr- coming out with trying to get that done or get to that they've been trying to make to get that started and get that going fails pretty quickly. Yeah, because they're not like <laughs> they don't really invest in it. That's the problem is they invest in it to get it out the door. But that's about it. 
I mean, Fortnite is yeah, probably and the and best it, example of like them investing, obviously, in it. But they also but, have more money. And then their God, whole thing has become. <laughs> I mean, but they've iterated on it, and then they keep making bigger and bigger deals for it, which that's part of it. Now Epic has become Fortnite drives everything. So I mean, that's all Epic because, is. <laughs> yeah, I mean EA, a large chunk of EA is Apex Legends and, and their sports stuff. So you know when you do find that hit for you, it does work. It's just like you said, Daniel, you gotta kind of let that thing be its own thing and not just oh well we're gonna plan for I mean Look at yeah. how much crap Destiny has had to go go through uh just to be where it is and now they're now they got bought by Sony. Uh Bungie did. And obviously Sony has a reason for it, right? They want to use Bungie's expertise to help continue to make more of these live service games. And then obviously give Bun- uh you know Bungie a cash infusion so that they can keep doing things with Destiny. But that's my thing is, you know, Ubisoft's going crazy with uh, making all these free-to-play versions of the games that they... And to their credit, right, Rainbow Six Siege has worked. And That's a good example. I mean, Six yeah. Siege is actually a good example. But didn't, one, that, didn't that not work at first? And then... It didn't. Just, right, right, it didn't. And right uh, now it seems like if... And I'll use Avengers as the, my example since it was the most recent one. If it doesn't get massive success out of the gate people are just dropping it left or the right look what happened with uh, right. even though outriders wasn't necessarily a live service game it was made like one so when the servers and all that other crap happened with it and and then it wasn't a game that you could uh that wasn't played very well solo and all this other issues with it it Right, they're having DLC for it. They're having expansion pack for it. But how many people are really going to come back to that game now? Probably not many, right? But like you're I mean, saying, look at look at Valheim, right? Like nobody knew about that game until it just exploded, right? And it's still going. That's the thing is, I get you have to plan somewhat, but you don't need to have this. Oh my God, our whole strategy for the rest of time is going to be, we're going to get this thing off the ground and we're going to forget about everything else we're doing. Uh, because we have a way, we have to find a way to nickel and dime you because gaming is getting too expensive. Yeah. And I feel like the more they announce that they had this 10 year plan for the game and everything, people are going to, people aren't on buying it. into it because they know they don't get the full game at launch. There's no point yeah. in getting the full game. Like Avengers was sixty dollars, and they had ten years or however many expansions planned. They saw this as their Fortnite, basically their co-op game that's going to last forever. People will buy whatever they can, and people just looked at it and said, "Well, I can buy it now." And it's obviously not a complete. Like, yes, you can play through the game. There's obviously going to be more characters, extra stuff that are coming out. Why buy it now when I can wait a year and get? all the characters for the same price and then play it and get into it. When they say that they have this big plan and they have all these extra releases coming out, people just, it's at the point now where people are looking at it and saying, there's no point in me buying it right now. I need to wait so I can get more stuff for my dollar than jumping in now and saying I was one of the first people there and spending extra money by the time everything is done. And then look at how many of these start off with a price and then they go free to play. You know, Rocket League, uh, Fall Guys is about to do it, uh, pretty soon here as yeah, they well, move on to the consoles. So, yeah, but Rocket know. League started, I mean, Rocket League got its popularity with the price and then went to free to play. Right. Same thing with Fall later. Guys. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you would think that's what they want looking at it to try to get more people into it and try it, even if they didn't want to spend the money on it, but putting out a $60 game and saying, Oh no, we're going to release all this extra stuff. that's going to cost you more money years on down the line. People aren't buying into it. They don't want to. Yeah. I be mean, look at, dying. look at um, the strikers charge, the, the Mario strikers uh, battle league. Nintendo announced that they're going to basically, if they're going to be free, updates but they're going to be doing the same thing they did with uh tennis and and golf where they're going to be 
adding things on later on. And they didn't realize that I think that hurt golf and tennis as well, where you didn't come out with the full game at first. And then you got to keep waiting for them to add stuff to it. And by then, people have kind of dropped off. So, yeah, it seems to work for Splatoon, though. Splatoon, I think, is a different thing because you know how that game is, is going to work. And this is the third one, right? I mean, yeah. they've mastered that at this point. I think when it's been so long since you've made a golf and tennis, and also I think golf and – well, tennis was the, the promise of the great single player that wound up not being good. And then the golf, I think what hurt it was that some of those modes that they're making a big deal out of wound up not being as fun as they made it out to be. But it makes me think about it because I was really hyped for uh, the new Strikers game. And then it's like, oh, man, you're going to be kind of slowly piecemeal giving me stuff for it. Am I going to keep coming back to it? I don't know. Funny, I said the same thing, but then I said, oh, man, it's a soccer game. And then it, that minor just evaporated. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> well, and honestly, if you're Nintendo, the answer, if you're wanting to do that, is get the Pokemon company and make an online game where you have multiple people in there. And then your expansion passes are the different worlds. Where I, and I really Pokemon. think they're waiting until Pokemon has really started to dip before they do that. Yeah, but the problem with yeah. doing that is then you're going to have smaller fan base, at least initially, and the game won't be as popular initially. And then companies yeah. will look at it and say, well, we didn't get the jump we wanted, so there's no reason to keep doing all this other stuff. When if they did it now, you would probably you still have a large fan base, right? and you would get people that might have stopped paying attention to it looking at it because it's different. It's not the same thing year after year. Right. But, I mean, that's okay. that's why well, Legends Arceus is doing well. I mean, Pokemon also isn't like a yearly franchise like Call of Duty, so there's more what? It's, wait, it's not a yearly franchise, Mark? Are you kidding me? How many well, it, Pokemon it, it, games? <laughs> Pokemon comes out every year with something. Yeah. So, and they have, what, like four games going on right now that are selling ridiculous numbers? I mean, Pokemon had one of its best years ever with the Diamond and Pearl remakes, Legends Arceus, and then the ones that are coming out this year and what you got Pokemon Violet. Snap. Yeah, Pokemon Snap. Well, uh, Violet and Scarlet, I think, yeah. They got a heck of a 2022 still still happening for them. Sony, I think, is they're going in the right direction to me as far as like expanding beyond. They really do. I, the, what they're really looking for is not necessarily, I think, live service. It's more of like that hit multiplayer game. How many times have they come out with this multiplayer game and it just doesn't hit? That's really what I think they're really looking for is they, they haven't had that in a long time. That's because they don't make them. Yeah. I mean, that's like the Microsoft doesn't make single player, player stuff. Sony doesn't make multiplayer stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, what was the last of like, does that destruction all stars that hit with a total whimper? Mag. Yeah. And Mag as well. Like, so, uh, just, and, and they, and to their credit, they keep putting them on PS Plus to get people to pay attention to them, and they still kind of just force it for them. Well, I think part of Sony's big problem was how many times have they gotten hit with hacks where their network has been shut down or passwords and usernames have been stolen? I mean, Sony has had a lot of things that have affected their multiplayer going back. Well, going back to the DCU online launch, what was it? Sony Online Interactive, I think, was one of the yeah. pu- was the publisher of the game when it first came out. And then a month in, there all the Sony servers got hacked and everything got shut down for about a month. It was longer than that, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's just so you look at got screwed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you look at everything that's happened to Sony, and their multiplayer has just had disaster after disaster from not even a game standpoint, but just from a technical support standpoint. Yeah. I mean, mean, to be fair to them, those were also like older things that happened to them. But it seemed to happen as they were gaining momentum. Then it just killed their momentum. I mean, think back to when, uh, 
what was it, Halo 2 and 3 had come out and you had the online multiplayer. Imagine what would have happened if Microsoft Live got hacked and they had to shut it down for a month. Halo oh, would yeah, be would the franchise it, it is now. But exactly. I mean, that's a similar thing that happened to Sony and they haven't had anything to get that momentum going since then. Well, I mean, I think also to be fair to them, they went in the direction that was that was uh, positive for them, right? All these third-person narrative-driven action games just kept hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. And so they just went in that direction of like, or oh, we're going to make these big showcase movie games uh, and we're going to just keep knocking them out every time, winning all these awards and everything. And can't really blame them for doing that when it's it's working for you. No, but I mean, you even go back to the PS3 and the issues with like Skyrim stuff wasn't working there and they were patches weren't getting launched for whatever reason. Um, yeah, you have a lot of I mean, you would have a lot of hacking on some games more so mm-hmm. on the Sony version of the games than on the Microsoft versions. And it just people looked at it and thought and well, Microsoft has the better multiplayer, so I'm just going to lean into the multiplayer with them. And that's what it's. And to be fair, Sony did move away from multiplayer, but if they're wanting to get that back, they're going to have to try to regain people's trust and just coming out saying, we have this game planned out for 10 years isn't going to get people excited for it. Yeah, I mean, I also I think their service, if that service does well of changing PS Plus and making it something similar to Game Pass, if that does well, I think you could certainly see that really take off and be a boom for these multiplayer games. So uh, there's that as well. I mean, speaking of that PC direction for them, of them kind of embracing PC and and really wanting to use that. I mean, we kind of know some of the things that are coming next. You know, the Uncharted Collection, the Returnal is heavily rumored, uh, could even be announced at this uh, state of play thing that we uh, that's coming in a few days, even though they've said that what's going to be shown is stuff from third party partners and, and stuff for the VR two, um, which that's supposed to be coming out next year at some point. It seems like Sony is really trying to put their, you know, more, more things and, and more pots and they, so they can kind of cover their bases, uh, instead of, you know, having that one singular focus they used to have. What games do you think we could, or I guess collections could we see, let's say next year. What do you think, Mark? I don't know. As far as like, what, what just overall like franchise collections or? Yeah, I mean like there's a certain game that it seems like everybody wants on PC, Bloodborne. You know. I mean, it, I I don't yeah. want Bloodborne just because I wanted to to see that fan base burn. But <laughs> stop, <laughs> go on. Like there's uh, you as the PC person. I know you have a PS5, so it doesn't really matter. But you know, you as the PC person, is there a Sony franchise that you'd really like to see come to PC that's not there yet? Jump and Flash. I mean, maybe Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. The, the like the two last like good like new good ones, or you know the PS5 one and the, and the PS4 one, and they can yeah fine drop that live at the PS5 one needing an SSD. Other than that, I mean, maybe Dreams, because you, you could probably do some fun stuff with that if this still isn't going on. But Yeah, I'm surprised Dreams wasn't one of the first ones, because as soon as you put it on PC, obviously you have the, the licensing stuff that you have to deal with that's an even bigger issue that they've already had to deal with on on the console side. But, I mean, if you really want to see that take off and become a creative big deal, I think putting it on PC is going to improve it even more. Ratchet and Clank's a really good one. Uh, anything else, Daniel, that you could see, uh, maybe? I could see them doing a, uh, I think more likely what we're going to get is, I know they said it's a bunch of, going to be a bunch of third party, like third party partners. I think you're going to see the new Resident Evil for the PSVR. I mean, maybe some VR multiplayer games where yeah, people could, I mean, where it's dedicated to multiplayer. I think there's going to be some interesting announcements, but I don't think it's going to be anything first party. Or they could just announce like the oh, uh, PS, like the old emulation crap will come to PC. Yeah, I, I'm and not expecting we- anything big from that state of play. I mean, 
the last, I don't know how many have been very kind of underwhelming. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it looks like they're going to be focusing more on the PSVR two, And I'm kind of curious to see what direction the games are going to be going in that. With the last one, it was more experiences. There was some multiplayer stuff, but it wasn't, it never seemed like it really took off. Yeah. Whereas if you could do, if they can get a multiplayer VR game that people are actually playing, I mean, I think VR would be really good for multiplayer and Sony can lean on VR a little bit more with the second gen helmet now. But my big problem when I look at it is if I compare PSVR 2 with my Quest, yeah, the graphics are going to be better in the PSVR 2, but I still have that cord that I'm attached to and I could trip over while playing or kick it or something happened. Whereas with the Oculus, unless you're charging it, you don't have a cord, even if you're playing with a P- through a PC. I, I definitely hope that PSVR 2 brings in some different things that we didn't get to see with PSVR 1. Obviously, you have to have the the confidence from the developers and the actual developers wanting to make more games, which they say they are. Um, so I really hope that that's the case. And the difficult thing with VR is that you can't have these long experiences, right? So you don't really, people don't really want to sit in VR for eight to 10 hours at a time or whatever and play a game. I mean, it's something that you're kind of going little by little playing something. So that's, that's why I really think like that, whatever Horizon Zero Dawn, like Call of the Mountain thing is, is probably more of like the, the Batman thing or the Iron Man of like, it's the novelty of being in that world and kind of seeing what it is and not another game in that series. I think um, you can get people playing, uh, maybe not eight to 10 hours, but you can get people playing longer games in VR. The, And you actually have a better chance of them doing that with the PSVR just because it's tethered. You don't have to charge it or anything else. The problem is everything that they had made that was a longer game for the original one was just you could also play it without the VR headset. If they tailored something specifically for VR, I think it would work really well. Uh, E Valkyrie, for example. I think the thing that killed it was at least when it initially came out, you didn't have, you didn't have people playing. You couldn't play against people on the PC. I think they changed it later, but initially I don't think you could. And so that limited the player base. And so people were waiting a lot. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the VR games that, I mean, I've had my Oculus on for four plus hours or meta helmet, whatever they're calling it now. I'll just say quest two. I've had my quest two on for four plus hours doing different stuff in it and never gotten mo haven't gotten motion sick. Haven't, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit, it feels a little bit weird to take it off, but I've sat down playing games. I've stood up playing games. The key is just to make it so that people it's actually game. And it's not just the novelty of it because the novelty wears off, but if it's a good game, people will keep playing it and enjoying it. And I think that was part of the problem barring like two or three games. A lot of it was, novelty and once the novelty wore off there was no reason to sit there and keep playing fair enough uh but speaking of things coming up soon we know i mean it's not e3 but you're still having some of these events i mean any of these that y'all are excited about no (laughs) no i mean i'll if i'm my problem is except for the ones on sundays there all of these are normally on days that i'm working so Sony, I can probably catch, but I, I'll have to leave an hour into it. The 7 a.m. on Friday, I'll be at work. I, or I'll have just gotten off work and won't be able to really sit and watch it. Yeah. Uh, the game fest, I'll be asleep after working. Same for the Gorilla Collective and everything. I mean, I'll probably watch the recaps and listen to it and see what was released, but I won't be able to watch a lot of stuff live. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily think it's about watching it live as it happens. It's more about like getting the cool announcements that you hope you do from these things or uh, from the indies, just getting to see some cool things. Xbox really needs to nail this uh, because right now they have got a lot of people that are upset 
and feeling like there's not a whole lot. I mean, another year of not a whole lot going on, even though last year you did have some releases, you know, you had Psychonauts 2, you had Halo and you had uh, Forza, which again, all three were well received at, at, at the time, you know, two of them won lots of awards. Uh, even Halo won some awards as well. So, you know, they've got your two big games got delayed out of this year. You got a lot, you know, at, after the Cuphead DLC, you really don't know what else is coming. So they really need to knock it out of the park there. And man, I, I hope Summer Game Fest delivers as it usually does with something uh, that we don't expect. And I'm excited for all these indie showcases, of course. So nothing, nothing for you at all, Mark. Uh, I mean, let's see. I'll watch the Xbox One, and I'm sure whatever Sega announces will be disaster. But that's about it. In fact, just having an Overwatch showcase is like hilarious to me personally. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we don't really know how long it'll be before Overwatch Two, so I guess they've got a yeah, well, do. Uh, at least a year, or, you know. Well, I'm years. saying that there's still people out there wanting to play Overwatch, so they got to give them something to get excited about uh, until then. But- I mean, for the past, even before, I mean, Overwatch has already been on like death's door or like life support for the past like two to three years as it is. So, yeah. And I think if they say like, oh, we have this map from Overwatch 2, we're going to put in Overwatch 1, that only fuels the flame of like, why are we getting Overwatch 2 then? You know? Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's upsetting. It's sad. I mean, but, you know, the PC game gamer showcase, like, that's never been important yeah it's, it's never been a thing that i've it's always been skip and if somebody announces something cool if not who cares i will yeah. say i think xbox is going to uh announce some deal with a third party company where a certain a game is going to be coming day one on game pass that wasn't expected i mean i think that that's what they have to nail here is not just have one but have several or have some kind of deal with a publisher uh maybe not uh more of like the ea play kind of deal where you know that for a while uh they're game. i mean there is rumors of that i'm sure you'll get the announcement of the ubisoft plus but that's not actually going into game pass like ea play that's like oh it's there if you want to add it yeah. uh, or well that's how it's supposed to be anyway we'll see how that goes it's also coming to the playstation uh plus thing so yeah. I just really hope uh, Microsoft isn't banking on a Diablo Immortal console exclusive announcement. Oh, God. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, please, please. Don't. That better not be the uh, the big thing that we're, we're hearing about here. Well, that being said, that there that's probably going to be it here for this episode. Um, I highly doubt. That, I mean, I'll be surprised, but I don't think there's going to be anything super crazy that we need to have a show before next Monday between what Sony announces and whatever Sega's thing is. So we'll definitely be talking about those things on, on the next show. Um, and then who knows, maybe we'll get some, some leaks or whatever from the other shows that are going to be happening later that week. Uh, but until then, everyone, uh, thank you for checking us out on this week's edition of the show. Um, Really hope that uh, y'all have enjoyed what you heard. You can always listen to us on any of the podcast platforms that are available. You can also uh, check it out on YouTube as well. Go subscribe to that W2 Network channel, and you get everything that uh, we do there, including all the Mark Radless stuff with all the the entertainment stuff there as well. Until uh, next time, everyone. See you later. Later. Later.